All right, folks, and with that, we've got Sindark Fates here with Scooby-Doo Unmasked, so take it away. Alrighty, I will. So the timer is going to start as soon as I just create a new save file. I'll explain why we have um, set saves real quick and later in the run. So the timer is going to start as soon as I press save, which is going to happen in three, two, one. Oh, whoa, whoa, sorry, sorry, oh. sorry, 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 sorry. I oh. apologize. Uh, we're having a little bit of a layout issue here, um, which I don't really understand. That might fix it. Sorry about that. Sorry to like ha cut you off like Oh, last no, it's fine. <laughs> ah, okay. So we just had the wrong layout um, marked in the uh, in the internal data. Right. Sorry about that. Oh, that's it's cool. all yours again. And we're fixed layout this time. <laughs> all right. So we're going to overwrite this save file again, as I'll explain the why we do that. So the timer is going to start in three, two, one, go. Alrighty, so I'm going to be explaining the story of Scooby-Doo Unmasked after we skip a couple of cutscenes. So to basically explain uh, the story of this game, so Fred wants to visit his cousin Jed at, a, at his company that he works at, FFM for short. And so basically they make like monsters out of, a, out of material called Mubber, which basically, you know, acts as like a real substance. And basically, as soon as we show up at FFM, Jed is nowhere to be found, and the whole game is our job to figure out where Jed is. So right now, this is basically a tutorial level explaining mechanics. Clues we'll be giving to Velma, as she'll be opening stuff in the hub worlds. But in this one, she'll be opening a door for us in this level. So we're just going to uh, go down this Mubber slide. I'll explain what Mubber does in the game. Simply just skip Fred's cutscene. Jump on this camera stand. So we can get to the zip line a little bit faster. And for our main uh, form of movement is rolling as you can as you do a roll by jumping and pressing X. And you can simply cancel roll by jumping and you can just cancel the jump into another roll which uh, adds a very fast movement. So uh, Daphne tells us to defeat the rats to save Velma but we're just actually going to leave Velma to the rats. Jump on this box, roll up here. And right now we're going to actually try to regain our jump by making ourselves perfectly flat on here. We can get on top of here. Skip Shaggy. Shaggy, you'll give him any food item, but we won't be doing that as he'll just give us extra health and that's gonna be the end of FFM. So how this game works is that there's gonna be three worlds and each world has three levels. So right now we're in the first world, Chinatown. And as the category suggests, we're actually gonna be doing all the levels as in any percent. We actually skip all the levels for Chinatown. Obviously we can't do that for this category. So the first thing we need to do to actually access the first level is collect this clue and bring it back to Velma. Now we're actually to grab a little something over here. Simply just regain our jump on this sign. Ground pound up here. We're actually to collect something called tokens and tokens are very specific for each world. I'll explain what tokens do later as it's not going to be playing a huge part in the first level as you don't need it. Alrighty, simply roll up on this wall. Now we're gonna do a thing called trampoline storage. Simply if you walk on uh, just anything and just jump on a trampoline, you'll actually be able to regain your jumps. We're actually gonna do a trick right quick. Just clip through that and then we're actually out of bounds right now. So we're simply just gonna skip a lot of this level right now. Simply just roll out of bounds real quick. Now we're gonna try to roll in bounds actually. As we're gonna get on this trash can to actually progress through the level there we go now we're actually inside the cookie factory we're gonna be doing another skip instead of just doing all this um, slow platforming wait for this elevator to rise ground pound onto these flower bags and I'm gonna be spinning on, on the conveyors as you do lose speed but if you do spin you actually won't lose any of your momentum just a small chase scene but we'll just simply outrun the monster I didn't make the gas cycle, which is fine. We're simply just going to keep on making our way up to the cookie factory. We're also going to just try to avoid the ladders as they're just also very slow. But they can also mess you up as to where sometimes Scooby just likes to gravitate towards them, which can slow you down and make these jumps a little bit harder. 
we're going to try to avoid them as much as we can. Now we have added obstacles of flowers that are just dropping. Jump on the spring, just keep on doing the same old, same old. Just ignore these rats. Now we're actually be doing uh, another skip is coming up very soon. We're actually going to be setting up another trampoline storage. We're just going to walk on this conveyor, jump on the spring, and get on this piece of glass. Now we're going to try to just ground pound to the next floor. There we go. Now we're actually at the end of the level. We're just going to simply just jump on the spring, grab this ladder. Thank goodness I did grab it. That ladder can be pretty finicky. Simply just progress through the last conveyor belt. Collect this clue as it will be necessary for actually solving the mystery for this world. And that's going to be the end of Cookie Factory. And right now we're just going to be skipping a bunch of stuff. As the end of every level, when you collect clues and other items, you're going to be giving it to Velma as it will unlock certain things in the hub world. We won't be needing any of those things in the hub world, but one of those items will obviously unlock the second level, which is going to be sewers. And now I'm actually going to explain why we clicked that token earlier, as to where tokens are basically the power-ups of this game, as you require a machine. In this, in this world, we'll be getting a Kung Fu suit, which has one of the fastest movements, and also has a Kung Fu blast, which will be used, obviously, to access this level and many other parts. Alright, so our first thing we're actually going to be doing right now in sewers is actually farming Mubber. As to where you have to access uh, these machines with Mubber, and you get Mubber from either just random boxes that are marked with FFM or from enemies. Where somebody's going to jump on this lady, ground pound the sewer gate, break these boxes. And if we still don't have enough, we have spiders over here. This will give us the remaining 30 Mubber that we need to access the Kung Fu suit. And we're going to be using the Kung Fu Blast Law just to break these doors. We're actually doing another skip right now. Alright, we messed it up, but we'll just simply do it again. So what I'm trying to do is simply just do a dive kick. And you can actually, if you have enough height, you can actually just regain your jump when you do dive kick. Uh, this jump can be pretty weird though. If it's fine, if we do die, we're simply just go have to grab the Kung Fu suit again. As we are gonna not, as we're always gonna just be using the Kung Fu suit in just sewers. Now I'm also just gonna grab this Scooby box as to where I'm always gonna have three health, but if you do grab a Scooby box, you'll actually have four hits instead of just three. We almost got the jump. So I'm just going to keep on trying at it. There we go. We finally made the gap. Took a while, but it's fine. Now we're simply just going to go onto these pillars so we can access the rest of this level. Okay, this is being weird. Alright, we're actually be doing another skip. We're simply going to go over to this pillar over here, which is going to rise. You would just have to do a bunch of platforming. Or we're actually just going to grab this pillar right across from us. If we miss it, fine. We'll just simply just set it up again. I went a bit too early. Alright, there we go. So now we're going to wait for this little platform to descend so we can actually just grab it. Also, those UV lights on the side, if we do touch it, it will get rid of our Kung Fu suit, which we don't want. And we're going to jump over to this paw. Alright, so we're going to do a dive kick so we can get on this wall. So we can actually just climb up the rest of this waterfall real quick. Just simply do another blast to get rid of this enemy and the door. Now we're going to be going to a little slide section. Simply just going to wait for the loading screen. And to basically explain, right now we're simply just, it's basically just an auto-scroller. You can hold forward, which does increase your speed a little bit, 
and there's also separate paths. We do actually have a set path that we do go, so we're gonna go left first, as to where the other paths will actually slow you down. There's also gonna be pillars and whirlpools. Those will also slow you down a bit, but they won't lose you that much time if you do hit them. We're gonna go left again, so we just keep on avoiding pillars and whirlpools. And also another thing, you might see any food items. We're also gonna just try to avoid those as those do actually like freeze the game until you hit uh, either A or any other button to get rid of it from your screen. Now it's gonna be our final decision. And for once, we're actually gonna be going right. Avoid the cucumber. And simply just do more s of the same. This will be a little bit more long. Alright, now we're actually at the end of this part. Up over here, cutscene. And we're actually to be saying goodbye to the Kung Fu Su as we do just need to hit these UV lights. Just ground pound to the zip line as it's a little bit faster. Also going to be spinning on these platforms as you do just lose a lot of speed a lot of the time. Just go through these gates. Just ignore a lot of the enemies. We're actually to do a fight skip. Simply just hit him. Set up a camera in a specific way, walk up to the gate, and where somebody's going to clip through it, collect the clue, and that's going to be the end of sewers. Alright, now we're actually going to be moving on to the final level of Chinatown, which is going to be Temple. We're simply going to give Velma the clue to actually access Temple. Alrighty, time to go to Temple now. So we're actually be doing a skip immediately as soon as we do get into this level. We're actually going to head to the left real quick as soon as this loading screen's done. Head this left over to this little island. Now we're just going to do a roll on this rock, which will allow us to gain our jump. Grab this ledge over here. We're going to do another roll over here. And now we're at the waterfall. For this gimmick of this level, you're supposed to be hitting gongs to activate platforms and all this. We're going to hit this gong. So we can actually just access uh, pillars that will lead us to the next area of temple. And immediately after we get here, we're actually doing another skip. I'm going to try to line myself up right here. Roll up on this rock and jump over here on this cliff. And we're basically near the end of the level. Hit this gong so we can actually get platforms to actually make these jumps. go through one more little zone so to get to the Kung Fu suit and right now we're actually we are gonna have to do a mandatory fight but we do have setups for it Oops. cancel my glass a little bit too quick a little sloppy but it's fine Alright, now we have to just hit these three gongs, so we can actually get to Daphne, which is basically the end of the level. Alright, so we're simply going to just keep on going up these platforms. Ninjas will spawn on certain platforms, which is fine, we can simply just go right through them. We are going to collect this clue. Jump on the ninja's head so we can get to Daphne a bit faster, and that's going to be the end of Temple. And right now, if you do collect the right clues, you'll actually need to actually solve the mystery, as you'll need to select three uh, clues to actually actually uh, access the boss, which we're going to do right now. So it's going to be Giant Fortune Cookie, Dragon Scale, and the Light Bulb. Now we're just simply just going to head to the, the first boss. We get up here. Hopefully, we don't grab the ledge. Oops. I was just trying not to grab the ledge, but it's fine. We have to. There we go. All right. So for the first boss of this game is actually to be Dragon. Simply just wait for the loading. All right. For, so for Dragon, we do have to get the Kung Fu suit to actually damage him. So what we're gonna do is some lever farming real quick. We do have a set path that we do have. And also, Dragon is one of the few bosses that isn't RNG, 
as a lot of it, a lot of this boss fight we will be uh, manipulating by bringing them to certain spots and hitting them at certain situations. So we're gonna simply hit them twice over here. Now we're gonna put ourselves over here. If we do time this correctly, we are gonna get four hits. This is going good. Now we're going to lure him all the way over here. Since we have enough time, since he does take a bit, we are going to destroy these boxes so they don't get in our way for further setups. Get another double. Now we're going to bring him back to where we brought him for the second hits. And get another double on him real quick. I missed the double, but it's fine. So we're going to set him up for a triple hit right here. Now he's simply one hit from death, which will maybe hit him right here. Alrighty, that's going to be the end of Dragon, and that's going to be the end of World 1. Now we're heading on to World 2, which is roller coaster themed. And we're going to be doing something very similar that we did in World 1. We're actually be collecting the power-up for this world uh, very early on, just so we don't have to go back for it later. We're going to jump on this trash can and ground pound over here. Turn my camera jump on these two platforms. I lost a little bit of momentum. There we go. Collect the token. We're also to collect the clue so we can actually access the first level of this, which is actually to be Haunted House. There is a faster way you can get to Haunted House, but I kind of don't like to do it. I just like to wait for the little roller coaster ride so we can actually access the level. And Haunted House is easily the fastest uh, level in this category. And you'll see why as we're actually going to be doing a major skip in a little bit. So right now we're just going to go to where the arrow's pointing. It's going to be a cutscene. And the thing we're going to do is immediately jump to this little thing. And we actually got a first try. We, so we grabbed that chandelier and just simply angled it towards that corner. So we can get above here. Now we're going to jump on this. Go through here as there's no collision. Jump through here, collect the clue, just skip it, and we're actually at the end of the level, basically. We're just gonna simply just go past a couple more enemies. Simply gotta go to that next clue, and that's gonna be the end of Haunted House. Alrighty, as I said, it was a very quick level, and this could be the end of it. We're just going to do the same thing, just keep on skipping a bunch of the cutscenes. Now to head to Water Park. And obviously, just like World 1, we do need the suit to actually access the level. And for this world, we get a bat suit. All it allows you to do is simply levitate. It really doesn't give you much, unlike the Kung Fu suit. Right now, we're going to be in heading into Water Park, which is one of the like longest levels in this uh, category. Is because a lot of these slides are pretty slow to be honest even if you are holding forward it really doesn't increase your speed by that much and also another thing we are going to need to do is actually farm mubber on our way uh, towards it we are going to need uh, exactly 200 so if we jump over here on these boxes and for these drums you can actually do trampoline storage on them if I can get it correctly. Saves a tiny bit of time. So if we go down a couple more slides right now. Now we're actually be trying to farm Mubber. And this is also kind of another RNG part, as I'll explain it as soon as we get past this bridge. Hopefully she doesn't fall into the water. Good. So these enemy spawning machines, they'll actually, when you destroy them, you'll get Mubber, but the Mubber amount is always random. 80 is fine. We'll be, I'll be showing you how we're going to get the rest of the Mubber for the machine. So if we just jump on these drums to get on this slide. Do another trampoline storage. 
go down the zip line. This we're gonna be farming the rest of our mubber. As we're actually be countering two enemies, and what we're gonna be doing to these enemies, we're gonna simply bait their attack. And right now, so how this game works, it, there's actually a combo system, funny enough. So the more times you do hit an enemy, the more mubber you will get consecutively. So right now we're just gonna simply just bounce on these two strong men a lot so we can get the remaining mubber. We'll simply just block their head. If we do have a good enough combo, we'll have enough. All right, we have the perfect amount. Now we're gonna break these boxes over here. Roll up on this wall and get enough height. There we go. All right, now we clip through. Now we have access to the machine, so we can actually have access to the bat suit. Just simply just go on these. Simply just gonna hover for a bit so we get to the last part of this level as we are actually nearing the end of it. Alrighty, so for the final part of this level, obviously since it's water park theme, we'll be going down water slides. Why not just let the final part of this level just be a giant water slide? And also, this part can be kind of hard if you're doing this casually, as basically if you do fall at any point, you'll be sent immediately straight back to the beginning of the slide. It's going to be kind of brutal. There's also just random objects we do have to avoid. There's also going to be food we are going to be picking up, but we're simply just going to be press, uh, just skipping through them. There will be one more food that we do pick up, but right now it's just going to simply just be avoiding more hazards. This will also be a great time for any donations or anything that needs to be read off, as this part kind of does last a bit. Right, we don't have any donations so far. Unfortunately, it's been going a little bit slow today, but you can all still donate to the organization for autism research by going to our Tilt of High campaign page, always available in the chat with exclamation mark donate. I can help you. I promise I'm useful. <laughs> And you can click that link, you can go there via IA PayPal or credit card and support this awesome organization. For a couple more time I can talk about the impact that the organization has. Oh, that's fine if you need to talk if about we have it. a little bit more. Awesome. So, a lot of people think that, you know, to be, you know, to contribute something to charity, you need, like, you know, a lot of money, but, um... You just need, you know, even just, you know, as one of my friends, uh, you know, slow hours like to say, even like your Starbucks, five or ten dollars a day, um, could help a lot. For example, for the Organization for Autism Research, a ten dollar donation, that is enough to send a professional curriculum development set to a general education teacher. And that means that, you know, one or more teachers in a school will now have the resources to, you know, learn and help um, people with autism to, you know, give them the wh whatever they need to be successful in their education. And if you're feeling a bit more generous, $100 donation can fund the Kid for Kids peer education resource for an entire school. So, like, imagine that, but, like, it's an entire school. So, I think that's a pretty sweet deal. Alrighty, so, what you saw, how I accessed this level, we didn't collect the clues necessary to solve the mystery for, uh, World 2. So what we simply did is got the bat suit and simply went onto those barrels and we simply just simply glided into a wall and simply just rotated my stick just so we can actually gain height. Uh, we do need a farm mubber for this level, 200 to be exact. Right now I'm falling a bit behind but there's going to be uh, more opportunities to be farming mubber. It'll just be a little bit slower. There we go. There's going to be another cutscene just introducing some enemies which are clowns. Obviously a circus can't have a clown. So we're going to destroy them more so we can get more mubber. There's going to be three strong men down here and a mubber machine. Hopefully we do get just the perfect amount. Uh, we'll just simply just kill this strong man so we can have the remaining mubber. Alright, now we're set for the mubber, for the machine. And now we're simply going to progress through the rest of this level. Obviously, avoid the balloons. We're gonna be doing another skip real quick. So we get on top of this tiger cage. We're gonna get on this box. 
Jump over here and simply just ground pound. There we go. Oh, we missed it. We, we are a little bit off cycle, but it's fine. Now we're going to go to the machine. Simply just wait for these trapezes. And uh, for this level, it's going to be the only level we're actually going to be backtracking. As the intended way is very slow, as there's going to be a lot of ladders and just very slow moments. So we do have a way to actually just backtrack. We're going to need to pass these UV lights real quick. As we are going to need our bat suit to actually uh, beat this level. I'm going a little bit too forward. So what I'm trying to do is simply just inch my way to where I won't hit it when I'm turning left. Alright, that's fine. We're going to just grab this platform. Now we're simply just going to backtrack our way through this level. As you know, we are going to be doing something at the very beginning of this level, and I'll explain it a little bit later. We actually don't need to collect that clue, as, funny enough, we actually won't be solving the mystery for World 2. And I'll show you how we're actually going to access the boss. But we're simply are going to complete the mandatory requirement that we do beat all the levels. Instead of just skipping it. Alright, now we're just heading our way towards the beginning. I did leave that clown on purpose, it's a little bit faster if you leave him there so you can bounce off of him real quick. Now we're going to meet back up with Shaggy. And to where on this opposite side of the ropes is actually the end of the level. So what we're going to do, activate this TV again. And right now there's actually an invisible uh, like platform on top of the TV. Granted, this kind of does make it hard to see it, but I just got a first try. Uh-oh, the rest of the level did not load, so we are going to have to take damage just so the platforms will load. Simply just do it again. I got it first try yet again. This trick is honestly really hard. I know I'm making it look easy, but it is really hard just because you have no indicator. You're just simply just taking a guess. And also, for only the bat suit, you can actually like touch the electric water without taking damage, but it's a very small window. And that's going to be the end of Circus Tent. And obviously, as I said earlier, we don't have the clues necessary to actually solve the mystery, but we're going to do the same thing that we did, how we enter Circus Tent. So we're going to go get this uh, bat suit again, over here. Make our way back to the barrels. Simply just keep on hovering into this wall. And right now the boss is just actually right here, so we're just going to go into the loading zone. And we're going to be fighting the World 2 boss, which is Qatar Ghoul. Katargul is also just basically no RNG, as these, sp these spiders will always spawn in the same spots. But only one part of this boss fight is actually RNG, and that's the drop speed. Uh-oh. So we're just going to be wasting a little bit of time just messed up the cycle. So we're just going to wait for him to finish his electric attack. Hit him. We're going to be doing something called early mirrors. So you're basically just going to throw a spider as soon as the next set of mirrors are going to drop so you can just destroy him early on. I didn't get early mirrors for the final phase so we are going to be spending a little bit of time just destroying the outer mirrors with these metallic spiders. And obviously there's obviously three phases to this boss fight. For this one he simply just, his inner mirrors actually take two spider hits instead of just one. So we're going to be able to hit him. Never mind. Spiders are also just, they decide what they want to do a lot of the time. Sometimes you'll simply want to send them forward and sometimes they just ignore your request of going forward and just fly off to wherever they want to. And also the third phase is also RNG. The first two phases have the same set of spiders, but for whatever reason, the third phase actually has random uh, spider sets for whatever reason. Because the rest of the boss fight you can actually manip. Hopefully this will be the final spider. 
There we go. That's gonna be that in Katargo. We're gonna be moving on to the final world, which is gonna be Museum. And also for any percent, we actually do do all the levels for any uh, for any percent. So this is gonna just basically be you know you know casual business if you do play any percent, as we haven't found a way to skip world three in any percent. So we just basically play all the levels. We're gonna move Daphne to a, a specific area, collect this clue, so we can actually gain access to the first level. And the first level of museum is going to be dinosaur themed. It's going to be a dinosaur exhibit. Alright, so basically our main goal for this level is to simply just get towards Shaggy. Somebody's going to make our way through the, this level. Get on these zip lines. Right now there's going to be a cutscene introducing pterodactyls. And right now we're actually be doing some rubber farming. It isn't as extreme as in other levels with requiring you 200. It's only going to be a measly 100, which is easily obtainable in this level. As we're not going to need to bounce on uh, the pterodactyl's heads. Jump on this turtle. And uh, most of our mubbers actually come from this enemy machine. Hopefully if the RNG is kind to us, we don't need to kill another pterodactyl. But we'll see. And the RNG was not good enough, so we're simply going to have to kill one more pterodactyl. So we have 100 mubbers, so we can actually access the suit for this level. Oh no. Hopefully he doesn't fall. That's awful that that happened. Fine, there's another pterodactyl over here. There we go, we have a hundred. Now we're going to just make our way through the rest of this level. There's going to be a mandatory clue we do have to collect. This won't be key to solving the mystery, but it will help us uh, get other stuff in the hub world. For now we're going to be climbing this quote unquote volcano. Hopefully we do make it on cycle. Which we did, which is very nice. Alright, we're nearing our way towards Shaggy, as you can see the loading zone right there. And obviously when we meet up Shaggy, he gets stolen up by some pterodactyls, and now we have to get through the end of this part to go save him. So we're simply going to use our bat suit and simply just hover on these. We're going to be using turtles to obviously bounce our way. We're going to simply just do the same thing over here, just hover for a bit. You don't need to hover all the way, but it's it really doesn't save any time if you do it like this. You can just simply just get enough height so you can just make it to the platforms and just do the platforming. Collect another clue. Hover over here. We're going to just... We are going to actually gain enough height so we don't actually have to hover on the second just because that will waste you a tiny bit of time. It won't waste a whole lot, but it does waste a little bit of time. Hop on the second to last turtle. As right now, we're gonna be doing a small skip. Instead of just climbing all the way up here, we're simply gonna collect this clue and simply just jump towards the hole that we do need to go towards. As I said, you can, as the bat suit's one of the few things to where you don't need to take damage. So there's just some visible collision that we can just get on there so we can get to the hole a bit faster. This is gonna be a chase scene. There's gonna be uh, pterodactyls just following us. There's also gonna be uh, obstacles we do have to avoid. You can also uh, manip these pterodactyls if you do move a certain way. We're gonna be simply just staying in corners so they just can't hurt us. And that's where we'd be doing just for the remainder of this part, as we're basically at the end of this level. So we just gotta wait for three more obstacles. Now we're gonna go to this corner. It'll go away. There'll be one on the left. And now we're actually on the final part. We're gonna go to the middle. And that's gonna be the end of Dinosaur Exhibit. Alright, so as same old, same old, we're going to be skipping a bunch of cutscenes, obviously just giving clues to Velma, giving us access to levels. And the reason why I overwrite a save file with, uh, with the save already created is that we're, we're not going to be collecting uh, the power-up for this level just yet, for this world. As we set it up to where this uh, knight has his shield up, so we can just have easy access to the second level, which is going to be Medieval Exhibit.
instead of wasting our time going up the stairs, collecting the token, going back down, going with the slow Sue and shooting down the shield. So we're going to try this glitch real quick. It's called Night Clip if I can get it. I missed it. It's fine. There's another way we can do this level. We're simply just trying to get past this fireplace. And right now we're going to do a chimney roll. Right now my rolls are a bit too steep. There we go. So we're going to hit this button so we can uh, uh, basically activate the exit. Now we're actually outside of the castle real quick. We also are going to need to be farming some mubber, but it's also a very small requirement. Only 25 mubber, which we'll gain very easy. So if we jump on the zip line, we're actually not going to jump on the trampoline, as we'll make it hopefully on cycle. It's fine if we do take damage, we just want to make it before uh, it does blast. Do another trampoline storage. We can get up here. We don't need to kill the knight, we'll simply just ignore him. Do another trampoline storage. And that's hookless. So basically the hooks can honestly be pretty awful in this game. Just because sometimes the game will just decide you didn't grab it. And so that can honestly be a huge hindrance in the run. So that trick just basically negates you needing to do uh, to grab any of the hooks. Hopefully we'll have 25. We have 26, which is very nice. We're going to be getting the Kung Fu suit, and right now we're going to be doing something called Fight Skip. So we jump over here, hopefully we got it first try. You simply just uh, dive kick and punch the wall, you'll simply just go through it, and that's going to be the end of Medieval. Now we are heading to the final level of World 3, Undersea. We are going to need to give Velma another clue so we can have access to it. There we go. Or somebody's gonna head our way by just following the Scooby Snacks. Hit the shark so the door will open. Normally, we would have to do this level with the suit of this world, which is Robin Hood, which basically all he does is just shoot arrows at targets. But recently, we found a way to actually beat this level with just base Scooby. So that's where we're gonna show you right now. Make a very tight jump to this turtle. Go on to this jellyfish, which will spring us. Ignore this pterodactyl. There we go. Make our way onto the submarine. We're going to immediately jump on these leaves, as if we do stay on the submarine, a cutscene will play. We're going to want that. Now we're going to bury up this uh, rat hole, so we can actually set up a skip real quick. There we go. So if you do roll and jump on this specific part of the submarine, you'll just actually regain your jump. So that's what we do to get on top of the submarine. But to actually solve this mystery, we do have to go down here to this tentacle and do tentacle jump. So we're going to line ourselves up right here. There we go. Collect the camera tripod. And now we're actually able to go through the rest of this level. Go down here. There's basically just going to be another auto scroller part. We're in a plane. You really don't need to shoot any of the blimps. You can just stay on top of here and uh, none of the planes will be able to hit you. So this is simply what we're going to do for the remainder of this part. There will be another part after this. For now we're simply just going to avoid a lot of this stuff. There's also food here. And we obviously don't want to grab food as I said earlier. It just kind of just freezes time. Wastes a little bit of time. But for this part, we are sadly going to have to go down as there's a green airplane in our way. So we do have to go down below and shoot these blimps. But as soon as we get past this green airplane, we'll just simply go back up. So we can just avoid all the danger and just not actually play this section. And a funny part is actually, even though we didn't collect the Robin Hood token, the game will just automatically spawn you into it once you leave the airplane, which is perfect as we do need it to actually beat this final portion of the level. We need to shoot out this third eye. Jump on it, go over a invisible wall. Now we're going to go to the trigger. That's going to be the end of Undersea. And right now we're going to be solving the mystery for a museum and heading to the World 3 boss, which I'll explain a little bit later. So it's going to be Dinosaur Bone, FFM Contract, and Camera Tripod for the mystery. Now we are going to have to go get the token for Robin Hood, as it is required for the final boss. 
So that's what we're going to do right now on our way to Caveman. She's going to be a lobster on our way, but it's fine. And uh, this, the community really doesn't like this boss. I find them alright. And I'll explain why a lot of people do hate Caveman. As we're basically going to be playing bumper carts with him. But the thing is, there's RNG, major RNG, and it's these power-ups. The Spark Shooter is the power-up we do want. It basically is just three free hits. And if we don't have Spark Shooter, there's also other power-ups like the Deep Freeze, which just slows down K-Man, which is a bit nice. As a lot of time, he does move faster than you. We're on second phase, it just drops some wires. Right now, we're simply just getting a lot of Deep Freezes. Alrighty, so far the RNG is not looking bad right now. You just get a much more deep freeze. Another spark shooter. Alright, we're actually on the final phase. And Caveman decides to cheat, basically, and just get a spark shooter of his own. Just because he knows it's broken. So he's just obviously going to abuse it so he can just kill us. But we obviously have, like, seven points of health right now with all the force fields. He's just ran into that himself. And also, deep freeze is also just a very buggy power-up. As a lot of time, it just doesn't like to activate final spark shooter we honestly got solid rng for a caveman and right now to basically explain the rest of this story we just went through all those uh places just so we can just land back at ffm so basically it was just you know we just ran in circles and so this is basically to be the tutorial level but a little bit harder as you'll see why Bob's so gonna find what happened to jed but obviously, as you can see, there's ninjas from uh, Temple here. Obviously, electric pools of water. We do still have to hit this button again for whatever reason to open this door. The Knights from Medieval. Pterodactyls from Dinosaur Exhibit. Hopefully, he doesn't send me through the floor. He can do that if you do go under him. He will just send you through the floor. Sadly, there is no zipline for us to go on. So we are just simply just going to have to go the intended way. Alrighty. Let's do much of the same old, same old. There's actually be a new skip we are going to be doing for this level. And it's called Ninja. You can just call it Ninja Jump. So we're basically just going to bounce on his head so we can just access this button a little bit faster. And right now we're heading our way towards another uh, button. We do hopefully have to be on cycle for it. I did waste a little bit of time with that. with not rolling. We do actually have to use hooks for once. Hopefully if we do make it on cycle. We were barely just off cycle, but it's fine. We'll simply just do it again. Simply just make our way back up to the springs. Just get back on the hooks. We'll simply just wait for the poison to go away. And we're simply just going to wait. I don't trust this platform. There we go. Now we have to hit this button so we can actually open the door to the mubber slide. Take the zip line. Just ignore this, uh, this knight. And obviously the level would end here, but it really doesn't. I'm going to click the scooby snack. So we're going to have to do a mandatory fight, which we're going to do hopefully two rolls. I missed the roll, but it's fine. And basically that mermaid man was actually Jed. He was actually in the first level, but obviously we couldn't tell just because he was in a mubber suit. Right now we're actually on the final boss, which is just a giant pterodactyl. We are going to be using all three of the power-ups. So the first one we're going to be are using is the Robin Hood. As you clearly see, he's opening a target every time he does three fire. Hopefully we can get double hits, which I did get. You can actually shoot a plunger. It's fine. So you can actually hit him twice if you do time it correctly. Hopefully, hopefully we can maybe get double double hit. Nope. It's fine if we do get one double hit, as it's just way faster than you just simply just sim single hitting him. This is going to be the second part of the fight, which we're going to be using the Batsu. And we are going to be manipulating him by just simply just going in a clockwise motion, as that will actually avoid his fire breath. And right now he's going to exit the screen, which is going to just be us avoiding more obstacles right now. Right now this is going to just be slow.
if you do just stay on the top, you will just basically avoid a lot of the obstacles. Now we're gonna do the same thing by manipulating him. Just simply keep on going in a clockwise motion. This time he's gonna do two fire breaths, but the third one he will cancel yet again. Here's the second one. There we go, he's off screen. The final obstacles we do have avoid, they decide to spice it up by actually adding more than just like four directions. And they are a tiny bit faster, but even still then, they're pretty easy to avoid. Now we're actually done with this section, but he can bite us, which is an insta-kill. Alright, he didn't bite us. We're now on the final phase. We're going to need to hit this lamp to stun him. Jump over here so we don't get hit by the rats. And we're just going to simply just chain these kung fu blasts at him. And the timer is about to end shortly. Time timer will end once we get to the save screen. And time. GG. All right, it was fun to show this game off. Oh, what was my final time, if I can know? Uh, I think it was about a forty-four, forty-one. It looks like the timer on stream hasn't stopped All right, that's, yet. That's not bad, uh, but it's a good time still. Yeah, I have actually just hopped off tech. I'm just finishing out hosting this run. <laughs> Alrighty. But yeah, it was a 44-41. Looks like time on stream has just stopped, but a little bit late. Alrighty. But that's fine. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for the run. All Is right. there anything else you want to say? Um, I would just simply like to give a shout out to the whole Scooby-Doo community. As you did see, Night of 100 Frights. If you do want to join any of the Scooby-Doo games more than just Unmasked and 100 Frights, you can just look up any of the speedrun pages and simply just join the Discord. We have plenty of members that will be pleasure to like introduce you to other scooby-doo games that's all i have to say all right thank you so much for the run folks we have wolfenstein the old blood coming right up by flynn lifts so don't go anywhere and we'll get that set up for you as soon as possible thank you so much again sin dark fates and hope to see you more all right catch you soon folks And coming up next will be Cosmic the Dolphin running Shin Samurai Chess and you present. We will take a little bit to set to set uh, 